Hello, and welcome to Mine Cave. In today's video, we will go over two lighthouse keepers whose deaths are shrouded in mystery. Grand Island Lighthouse is located in Munising, Michigan, which is in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The lighthouse sits along the southern edge of the Lake Superior shoreline on a small island just offshore. In August of 1893, George Jenry transferred to the head keeper of Grand Island North Lighthouse. Previously, he had been first assistant to John H. Malone at the Isle Royal Menagerie Lighthouse, where he served six years. This new post came with a nice bump in salary, where previously he had been making $400 a year, now he would be making $600 a year. This was good news for him, as he had quite a large family to support, with children ranging anywhere from 6 months to 13 years old. Jenry had a successful start at the Grand Island Lighthouse. However, in 1904, William Mather, company president of Cleveland Cliffs Iron Company, purchased most of Grand Island to set up a game preserve and hotel, with the main guests being his family and friends. Right away, Mather and Jenry had their issues. First, Mather wanted to own the entire island, but as the U.S. Coast Guard owned two lighthouses on Grand Island, both the East Channel Lighthouse and the North Lighthouse where Jenry was stationed, he could not purchase the entire island. Occasionally, an animal from Mather's preserve would end up near Jenry's lighthouse property, and it was said that Jenry would take it upon himself to shoot, cook, and eat the animals. Obviously, this just added to Mather's hate for him. Jenry was said to have an unagreeable disposition and was known to be hard to work for. Between 1893 and 1908, he had 10 lighthouse assistants, with most of them serving a year or less. In the spring of 1908, Edward Morrison was hired to be Jenry's assistant. Morrison was a U.S. Navy Reserve seaman who served four years aboard the USS Dixie, which was a training ship that sailed places such as the West Indies, the Mediterranean, and the Suez Canal. Afterward, he moved to Flint, Michigan, where he worked at the Imperial Wheel Works for three years and was an active member of the Friendship Lodge. This is also where he met and married his wife, Lena A. Johnson, on August 17, 1905. Morrison made the arduous journey of 350 miles from Flint, Michigan to Grand Island, and he started his position on May 1st. Lena had stayed home in Flint, expecting to meet up with her husband later on. She figured she'd give him time to settle into his new post, but sadly, she would never see him again. There's nothing to indicate there was any issue until Saturday, June 6, 1908. Jenry took one of the lighthouse sailboats to Munising to collect the monthly pay for himself and Morrison, which would have been about $50 for himself and between $30 and $35 for Morrison. The locals reported seeing Jenry by himself getting groceries and supplies, including a bottle of whiskey. It was well known that Jenry liked to drink. It was reported that he was drinking heavily while in town, so most likely he was already intoxicated when he got on his boat to head back to Grand Island Lighthouse. He was seen passing the East Channel Lighthouse, and by fishermen in Trout Bay, who are suspected to be the last to see Jenry alive. At this point in the story is when we have various reports about what happened. Some say that after the light had been dark a few days, some men from Munising ventured out to investigate. Some say it was the discovery of a body in a boat near the mainland that initiated an investigation. Based on the available evidence, this is what we do know. When Jenry arrived, he unloaded the boat and left the provisions stacked on the dock. There was a wheelbarrow nearby, so it seemed that at some point he had planned on bringing the rest of the provisions to the lighthouse. There was also an empty whiskey bottle in the area, suggesting that he had polished off all of his whiskey on the ride back or shortly after. Jenry's jacket was found hanging in the boathouse, and Morrison's vest was discovered draped over a kitchen chair inside the lighthouse, his watch and papers still in the pocket. Morrison was cooking a dinner of meat and potatoes and reading up on lighthouse regulations, waiting for Jenry to return. However, the meat and potatoes were left in the pan uneaten. During this investigation, both Morrison and Jenry were nowhere to be found, and two boats were missing from the boathouse. On June 12, 1908, a badly decomposed and possibly mutilated body washed ashore 25 miles east of Grand Island. Due to the condition of the body, he was not readily identified. One story ran by the Detroit Free Press claimed that Morrison's head was disfigured beyond recognition. He was finally identified, based on a tattoo of 13 stars located on his left arm. 
Shortly after Morrison's body was identified, his wife, Lena, received a letter from him. The letter read, quote, Do not be surprised if you hear of my body being found dead along the shore of Lake Superior. The keeper generally is of a quarrelsome disposition, and I fear an assault if I oppose him. He has never been able to keep an assistant more than a season, end quote. Some say Morrison died due to exposure and an inability to sail. However, this would not make sense, as he served four years in the Navy Reserve and owned his own boat, a 32-foot sailboat in which he sailed in all sorts of conditions, so he should have had the skills necessary to make the trek. Also, the weather that summer was quite warm, and on the day Morrison's body was found, conditions were clear with a high of 85 and a low of 65, which shouldn't be enough to kill someone due to exposure. After two separate investigations due to the strong suspicion of murder, with no real leads or suspects, the coroner declared his cause of death as exhaustion as a result of exposure in an open boat in Lake Superior. Now the first and most obvious theory would be that Jenry murdered Morrison and put his body in the boat to float back to shore while he made an escape to Canada. But this theory is muddied by the fact that a body was found that is suspected to be George's. However, due to the lack of forensic testing at the time, and how decomposed the body was, there's no way to conclusively say that it was Jenry. Another theory is that Mathers, who was mentioned earlier as having bought much of the island and setting up a game preserve and hotel, had hired men to take out both Jenry and Morrison due to his disdain for them. This is also the theory that Morrison's children held and were very upset that he was never even questioned about it. There's one piece of evidence that supports Jenry may have fled to Canada. In 1951, Jenry's daughter Joanna supposedly left her post during the middle of the school year to take a family trip to Canada, and she never gave a reason why. Maybe it was to visit her father on his deathbed, who would have been over 90 by then. Unfortunately, we will probably never know the entire truth about what happened to these two men. If you made it this far, I would like to say thank you, as these videos take quite a long time to make. Please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss future uploads, and I hope to see you in the next one.